Hey all, we're gonna do a quick run through of all down the line today and then we'll talk about it after. but you get the idea that uh yeah, it's just the transition into the ending there all right so let's talk about the intro the intro is like because there's a, there's a few breaks throughout the song you know where he does the you know where he does that um the intro's like the same timing and kind of the same thing but it's a little different so it's almost like you're holding a like a minor chord um so if you're doing a minor chord, right, you're gonna be holding, first of all, let's talk about the tuning. This is open G. If you don't know open G, I don't know what you're doing. It's a lot of fun to play in, but I take the low E off because that's what Keith does. It just kind of gets in the way. It's too bassy. You know, if you want that, if you want that real choppy rock sound, you gotta take that low E off. Um, so you tune the, take the low E off, tune the A down to D. And, excuse me, I'm sorry, turn the A down to G, and then uh, D, G, and B all stay the same, 
and then you tune the high E down to D. So G, D, A, B, D. Like that. And when you play it open, that's an open E chord. I mean, an open G chord. Anyway, that's why it's you know, called open G. Anyway, so that intro, right? That intro. It's almost like you're fretting. So you're basically fretting um, a minor chord, uh, like if you were barring it in the A shape. So um, your index finger is going to be on the E and B strings at the fifth fret. And then your middle uh, ring finger is going to be on the G string at the seventh fret, and you're gonna you're gonna hammer on to um, the sixth fret on the B with your middle finger. So see how that is kind of like a minor. Sorry, I can't see my camera all that well. Um, like that. Just try that. Um, so that's kind of the intro is with that fretting. So you hammer down, and then lift off, and then you're just going to fret the 7th fret, and then kind of open, so down, so you're fretting the 7th fret, open, and then 5th fret, so it's going to look like this. Whoa. So that's kind of the um, general vibe of the, the opening. Uh, you just do that, what did I do, like three times? I kind of just do it, I've played this song so many times at this point, I kind of just do it on instinct, you know? I really gotta broaden my horizons and listen to other stuff. Anyway, um, so then the verse is super easy, super fun to play. It's what makes open G so great, right? So you're just going to strum that open G chord. And you're going to hammer on like this. So you're basically doing like that Chuck Berry thing, but because you have this string tuned down, you don't need to do the whole shape like that, like you normally do. This is fine. Just having, just fretting the uh, chord. Fretting that one fret, and then... Yeah, so you're just gonna do that with the open G chord. Um, so just to be clear, you're gonna be hammering onto um, the second fret on the D string. Like that. Um, you can do the whole major chord shape that Keith does. So I mean, that's gonna be just those two fingers. So you'll be um, at the second fret on the D string and the first fret on the B string, like that. I don't really think Keith does the whole thing, though. It sounds to me like he just kind of is using that one. He's only fretting on the second fret on the D, like this. Okay, so that's... Um, yeah, so you do that. So that is, you're doing the hammer on, you're doing that Chuck Berry thing. Like that. And then on the fifth fret, you're gonna fret that. So you're not really gonna, you're not really gonna sit on the fifth fret. You're gonna slide almost immediately up into the seventh, like this. Like that. So. To explain that, you're sliding in. And then you're hammering on with that major chord shape again. So you're just going two frets up on the D string, one fret up on the B string. You know, I mean, things start me up, brown sugar, you know. You're just doing that, that shape. So I'll go through it real slow real quick.
Um, then, uh, as you get to the chorus, right at the end, rather than going back to that open G, Keith will strum it open, and then he'll fret that seventh fret again. And then slide back into the fifth fret. So I'll do like the final bar of the verse, right? So that's a really important transition because if you just keep playing it through in that open G, it's going to sound weird because every the bass everything switches to that. Um, in one second, that's going to be D. So everything switches to that D. So that chord does actually happen. It's not just like a, uh, you know, sometimes Keith will just change a chord randomly in the middle of the song and it fits because he's Keith Richards. Um, this isn't one of those situations. This is one of those situations where you really need to be um, making sure that you're hitting that right out at the end of the verse before the chorus. So. <laughs> how you move into the chorus and the chorus is a uh, fifth fret and then you're just doing that hammer on then you're going all the way up to the 12th fret which is a G and then back down to the seventh fret which is a D twice for the chorus and then the second half of the chorus uh keith doesn't go back down to the seventh fret he just goes up to the 12th fret and then back down to the fifth and then up to the 12th and back down to the fifth so i'll show you the whole chorus all the way through So, um, I think that's it for the chorus. Yeah, so that break, remember uh, I said for the intro, the intro is similar to the breaks after the choruses. Um, it's not the same, right? So remember the intro was this. The break is going to be this. You're, all you're going to do is you're going to fret um, the B, the B and the D string, the E string, B and E uh, on the fifth fret, like that. And then you're just going to go back two frets. And then Keith, um, I've seen it done a couple different ways. Like James James uh, or Private Tricker, if you used to watch him, um, he did he did this, which is like if you're a begin. <laughs> Hold on, I'm not calling James James a beginner. I think he was doing that lesson to make it more easily accessible to people. But what I'm hearing with my, you know, with my ear is not the whole fret being um, covered. Because I hear Keith do this. He bends that G and then lets it, he bends the G string and lets it go. So, like that. So it's going to be the B and the D, a B and E, I'm sorry, B and E strings on the fifth fret. And then the G string on the fifth fret to the G string on the third fret and then pull off. So So there you go. Um, there is a minor difference between the first chorus and the third chorus and the second chorus. So the first and the third chorus are the same. The second chorus kind of has like a bridge almost, but it's super easy. So remember the first chorus, after two run-throughs of the fifth to the twelfth and back to the seventh, so you do that twice. <laughs> do 
that twice. And then in the first chorus, and this is also true of the third chorus, I want to be clear on that. In the third chorus, this is the same. But um, in the first and third chorus, you do this. <laughs> into the like that um the second chorus before mick taylor's slide solo is not it does not do that the second time i mean after the first two bars of the verse uh, chorus so uh, i'll just run through the whole second chorus um just switching between the 5th and 12th frets, uh, the band kind of does a C, they sit on the C. You know, uh, and then slides up into that D chord, or the just barring across the 7th fret. Because um, that, you know, that's the part where, you know, Mick comes in with the... You know whatever it is he's doing. I'm not Mick Taylor. Um, and, and you know Mick Mick Jagger is like you know I need a shot of salvation, babe. Once in a while, hear the whistle blowing. You know like that. Um, and then I think oh no no so there's the end the outro to the song. The outro to the song's super easy. Um, it's just gonna be G, and then up to the fifth. And then you're going to go up to the 12th, which is G again, but because you're moving up an octave, it does give that sense of progression. When I was learning this song, I was one of the things that confused me about the outro. It's because I was like, oh man, it sounds like, you know, the chords are changing, but no, there's a G. It goes G, and then uh, C, or 5th fret, and then all the way up to the 12th fret, which is G again. You know, I just... And I love Keith Richards. It just goes to show, like, his songwriting can be so simple, but I feel like exclusively never going back down to that open fret and playing the octave G gives it such a clear sense of progression and energy over just, like, because he could have just done this. <laughs> Whereas I feel like going all the way up to the 12th fret and then back down to the 7th really gives it a sense of progression and energy and, and driving force, which is, again, just what I love so much about the Stones. It's, you know... That's the song. That's the whole thing. I'm not going to do the slide part because Mick Taylor is much better than me. Uh, quick note, there are two guitars that Keith Richards is playing here. I'm sure there's more guitars, but there's two main guitars you can hear in the mix. Um, I think for the most part, it's really only present during the verses in the chorus, and it does mostly the same thing. Um, I think, excuse me, I think if, um, if I'm not mistaken, it, there is a slight variation in the verse. So the verse is normally... I think that second guitar, and I'm pretty sure it's on the, the right channel, um, I think the verse for the second guitar is this. So he doesn't slide into that seventh fret, he on, off, and then on the 7th fret. I, that's how I hear it anyway. The mixing on Exile is so muddy sometimes that it's really hard to tell who's doing what and if that's actually what they're doing or if you're just mishearing. Um, but to my ear, it sounds like that second verse when he goes up to that uh, C chord on the 5th fret and then up to D on the 7th, he doesn't slide in. He on, 
open onto the seventh. Another note: uh, If if you don't, if you're unable to do tune by ear, um, I wouldn't recommend doing the studio version of All Down the Line because All Down the Line on Exile on Main Street, as are most of the songs on that song uh, album, um, it's slightly out of key. So it's like a, it's like G, it's like a little sharp of G, just just like a hair. So if you just sit there and you kind of like. Play that G during the verse. Just play that bass note, right? And then kind of tune up and down, try to find until it, it sounds good. It's it's helpful that Keith stays on that. Because then you can actually, this is, I mean, this is what I did before recording this video. I just sat there and I went. So that's helpful. And then you just tune to that, you know, you, you do the octave tuning. You know, um, yeah, that's it. So uh, good luck. Hope this helps.